Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. Looking forward to talking some Dune Prophecy with you tonight. Yeah, starting yeah. a new show. Yes, um, we are. Yeah, that shall be interesting. I still can't believe you wasted your time with the Tyson Paul match. Like, <laughs> what? that was not on my bingo card to see a DM from you about you <laughs> struggling to watch it. Yeah, yeah, it was one of the, it was it, uh, honestly, I'll just I'll I'll own it. I have FOMO. It was truly that. It was just a spectacle of seeing that event and I, I it was it was truly FOMO because it was just you know, I know they were supposed to fight, I believe, back in the summer, and then Tyson had an injury or something like that, and it got pushed to this. It got pushed to this week, and a friend of mine texted me about it, like you're watching a fight tonight. And I was like, oh yeah, that's right. So then I had the, and then the FOMO fully kicked in, and you know, all I have to say is that Netflix better get their stuff together because if they buffer like that during the uh, Christmas football game with Beyonce doing the halftime show, they're gonna have the beehive after them. <laughs> they think it was bad and then they were like getting ripped up on a friday night about the buffering god if the, if, if she's in the middle of the middle of her song at halftime of because they're so the nfl has uh, two uh christmas day games that, that's going to be streaming live on netflix and uh and and, and, and one of the games beyonce is doing the halftime show so <laughs> who's doing the other halftime show? i have no idea all i know, <laughs> I, I don't know it, it, it who knows but um but which yeah it's doing yeah. Hmm? which one is she doing who's she's playing doing the, she's doing the halftime show i think it's the houston houston game uh, i can't remember who houston's playing that day but um but yeah that's just something new yeah i mean obviously you know amazon has been doing the thursday night games on, the, on their platform streaming and it had some issues early on too with a lot of buffering and pixelated and felt like i was like watching something on a you know commodore 64 but um but um they've gotten their stuff they've gotten it together but um but i know netflix is doing this and then also i know they're also going to be doing uh wwe raw i think beginning of next year so it, it, they better get you know they got to get their all their hamsters like you know working so they can uh you know, do these live events. I mean, even though 60 million people did watch the Tyson fight. So, yeah. So <laughs> so and, yeah, the other card was more, well, as I said, I was trying to watch the other card because it was actually interesting. And, 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 and it kept like locking up and, and I was just like, really, for real? But, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I was uh, guilty as charged. I was one of those folks. And I'm sure, you know, if any of our listeners were watched it, uh, I, and I know some of you were, because I saw, you, you know, some of you uh, who I do engage with on uh, social, I think y'all were tweeting about it too. So. <laughs> 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 so you can't deny it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. forever. <laughs> yeah, once it on, is on X, it's, it's forever. So yeah. luck yeah. with that. <laughs> Oh man. All right. Well, with with that in mind of the holiday season, um, this is just a reminder that next week we will be taking a Thanksgiving break. So we will not be um with you guys um for our regularly regular weekly chat. Um, but we will return the following week. Um so so we hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. Yep, yep. Um, and then on that note, so so we're continuing down Superman and Lois. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is me trying to remind myself what happened. Because I'm I'm at least glad like the first two episodes we watched together and like these two episodes we watched together. Mm-hmm. Um because if if we were doing a week to week thing, yeah. this this is just so so overly slowed paced (laughs) yeah and and it's just it's melodramatic for um for no purpose Mm -hmm. and really all i just want to say is what really annoyed me 
was um, just the fact that it's season four, it's last season. And yet within the span of these two hours specifically, the twins have gone full circle, yeah. full circle in terms of where they started and where they are now, because because now Jonathan has powers mm-hmm. and and Jordan is whoa me mopey. <laughs> But Jordan's been woo me mopey all four seasons. It's just, yeah, yeah. It's just, I I don't know why they decided to, like, even that playing field when it was so much more interesting, the golden child's the one without the powers. And, Mm -hmm. I mean, they could have done stuff with it, but it just, they didn't. And then they decided to go, like, this route um last ditch but yeah yeah uh, yeah i mean as far as jonathan getting the powers um you know i it actually i'm glad they went there even though i, I knew um because like you know again like, you can only take that golden child without the powers for so long and and you called it last week as soon as uh as soon as lex like showed up in the barn and uh played the uh the the phone recording for uh for jordan um uh, it, again i guess the thing is the show for me is like it's entertaining but like we were, as we were talking before we started recording tonight after you know coming off off of agatha and uh and, and also the penguin the the the, the two straightforward like play by num- count by numbers predictability it, it's just it's like i said it, it's it's a fun watch but but it doesn't it's just that it's a fun watch and uh, and you see things coming it's telegraphed and we saw that you know i do like the fact that you know lois you know one of that that part was telegraphed but the thing is that it, the 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 cascading impacts from that confrontation um really leans into what this this show really is about which is at its core is about the, the kent family and whenever they have those strong family moments those whether it's strong emotions whatever it is you know the, that's when this show really excels instead of getting into the superhero power stuff um so you know so it was really lois and and, and jordan have the you know get to get to the uh, core of their relationship and and the dynamics there. I mean that so you know there 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 was really the payoff for the very predictable like you know outcome of Lex playing the video the the the, the auto recording you know to Jordan to try to break them apart. See, for some reason their scenes did not work for me. Mm. I thought the best scene, arguably of both episodes, was when um after Clark uh. Uh, falls during practice mm. with Jonathan. Um, they go home and then they try to brush, he tries to brush it off. Yeah, yeah. And I just, there was something about that where Tyler Hecklin, great, great Clark Kent, great Superman, mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. never been funnier. Yeah. Like, yeah. In all, honestly, in all four seasons, I never, like, the charm he had in that scene alone, I was like, where has this been? Where where has this been? Why haven't we gotten more of this? This was awesome. And he and then and and the bouncing off of Jonathan yeah. and, and Lois, like that scene was just like I now I remember why I enjoy the Kent so much on this show, but I've also been missing this kind of behavior. So yeah, um, I really I really liked a lot of the i mean to your point about thank god jonathan has powers (laughs) (laughs) because now we get to see some cool action um and and just the whole like him being able to train someone who is not as um just reluctant or it Mm -hmm. just like there's there's so much trepidation and yeah i don't know but 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 yeah yeah so I I I really liked like that moment out of yeah. all of all of yeah. them. There's yeah, and also yeah, and oh, also I think yeah I was gonna say also I think uh, with Jonathan getting powers, it finally 
gave the actor who plays him, you know, more to work with other than just to be, you know, again, instead of the same predictable Jonathan yeah. Jordan, you know, thing to play off of this, it, you know, the, the, you know, we always knew that Jonathan was very confident, very sure of himself. Um, and him fully embrace, like you said, em- embracing what he can do. And even, you know, I don't know if it's because his powers manifested themselves a little bit later. Uh, he, you know, he, you know, he either, either that caused him or his confidence or his, his you know, his you know, really allowed for him to like do things like fly right out the gate and, you know, do some of the things that Jordan due to Jordan's insecurities or self-doubt, you know, wasn't allowed, didn't allow him to, to, to be able to do, you know, whenever his powers manifested themselves first. So, you know, so it was really interesting. It was good to see that, that contrast in the brothers. And it really does, you know, it really did lean into their, their, their core personalities as far as how they, how they reacted when they, when they first got powers. Yeah. I did, um, to go back to episode three real quickly, always my hero. I did pre, I think that episode three is the stronger one of the Mm -hmm. two. Um, because I, I can appreciate, um, Sam, Sam Lane's swan song that we got here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was paying attention and not really paying attention enough where, I didn't really, it wasn't as telegraphed for me. Like it took me a few minutes to realize like, oh, okay. So then they're going to use the heart and the heart transplant. Got it. Yeah. Um, but, but still it was a very well crafted episode because like, you don't really get on to that. You don't really understand that that's what's going on until mm-hmm. way later in the episode um, than you probably should have. Yeah. And 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 overall, I think I think it was just an effective like this is how we get him back and it makes sense. And and there is a consequence like mm-hmm. it's not just everyone lives because we we both know the Arovo shows. They love bringing back people <laughs> <laughs> and there's still not being a consequence. But in this case, it was a life um a sacrifice to save another life. So yeah. Yeah. It was very well done. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 you know, if you're right, I mean, they, they did put the breadcrumbs, you know, of course in hindsight, it's like, Oh yeah. You know, whenever you have those, those flashback moments and stuff, but the mm-hmm. thing is the, uh, you know, they've been, they've been utilizing the flashbacks so right. well this season that, it, you know, to your point, by the time that you, re- you realize where they're going with it, it's like, Oh, you know, it it it, uh, it it is effective, and and I will say that you know Dylan Walsh, who plays Sam Lane, um, I, I always I always like Sam. Uh, that was mm-hmm. one of the stronger characters on the show, and uh, and whenever he he did make make the sacrifice there, I mean it was very effective. I you know I did I did kind of choke up a little bit because you know again. Uh, you know, these are characters over the last four years that I have, you know, have grown, I have an affection for, and mm-hmm. and, and I'm, and you know, and it, I remember whenever we got word that it was going to be the fourth and final season, and they were going to have the budget cuts that uh, a, a lot of the ensemble cast with this show were, were going to have to, we're, we're going to be spread out. But I think what they've done, given the budget cuts. Uh, is whenever they have utilized these characters just so far this season, they they used they've used them well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I think the biggest breadcrumb though was um at the beginning when Sam asks if Natalie and or demands that Natalie and her father return to the mm-hmm. DOD mm-hmm. because because as soon as that happened, it did cross my mind. Oh, John Henry is coming back. So, because towards the end of the most recent season three, I don't know if you remember this, there was some weird tension between Lana and Sam. Yep. And then earlier on in the season, there was some tension between her and John Henry. So, so now, now we know, we know what Endgame is. John Henry yep. and Lana got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my god! And the the fourth episode, it was just weird. It was honestly weird to go from that episode to say goodbye to 
a very important pivotal character in the show. <laughs> and then to have a weird wedding episode. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle and um, Kyle and uh, Chrissy, who we haven't seen at all up until this point. Right. And also it's been long enough where I forgot Kyle knew. <laughs> I forgot yeah. Chrissy knew. <laughs> I meant, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had forgotten about Cal, but yeah, I did remember Chrissy knowing, but uh, you're right. I had forgotten that too. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. He did know. Yeah. 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 It's just, oh, that's why I like season three left a bad impression. It was the one that was starting to become everyone knows the secret. <laughs> Let's yeah. see all of Smallville in. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, and it's just it was it was weird. It's it's yeah. it's it's weird to me how the the show we're at episode four, I think there's twelve episodes this season. Uh, ten. Ten episodes this season. Yeah. And it's it's weird how we're seeing faces and then we're not seeing faces. Like, I will be honest. I didn't really think a lot about John Henry and Natalie up until like, oh, we need them back at the DOD. I'm like, oh, that can happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what was going on there? And then and then she brought up Mateo and I'm like, oh, yeah, that like all yeah. these characters. But we haven't seen. And it's just it's it's interesting in the final season how they arguably had made it a point to really zero in on the Kent family and that nuclear unit and start very small as they want. And then it seems like over the course of the episodes, they're bringing back the ensemble that was to say the final goodbye. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> agreed. Yeah, 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 this episode, you're, you're right. Totally after what we, the, the sacrifice that we saw, Sam, and then also, um, you know, Clark regaining his powers and stuff. I mean, I know they were trying to do that. I guess ease back a B story in it, but it, I just felt like they were like I guess it was that I guess the A story was like you said they're bringing certain you know they're bringing some of the ensemble back, so it is Chrissy and Kyle and their wedding, and the dynamics there with you know Chrissy and her mom and 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 lessons learned, but and then as far as you know her get you know the runaway bride <laughs> thing that they had going going on there. But again, you know, but but they always do again tie it back to the Kents, um, and 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 Clark and and Lois, helping both you know, helping them try to get through these issues. You know, having the you know having a wedding at the at the barn, um, you know, things just conveniently like fall apart so that they can have it at the barn, <laughs> and um, but yeah, I mean, you know, but it was. Uh, what I did like about the episode four was with getting with with Clark, um, you, you know, and in, in, to your point about from episode three with stakes and and ramifications for things that happen, him having to learn, you know, about um, his limitations at this point, uh, given that he does have a sixty year old man's heart in his chest, um, you know, I thought that was very effective as far as how they wove that in there and also how they you know brought up about the scars again and you know and we saw lois having another i don't know i couldn't i wasn't sure if it, if her if, if this was her finishing her cancer treatment or or it was just another round of it but you know they they, they did pick up on that theme of like look you know we're all we, we're all we've all suffered and we've all you know we're all trying to heal from something so and, and maybe that was also the through line with Christy and her mother too. It's just like, you know, with with this forced, you know, with this hurried wedding, she's just like, you know, emotionally, I I, I got to grow a little bit before I'm ready to like commit to to this. So let's just take it slow. So, I mean, so those I guess those are some of the through lines. I guess that was sort of working her way through the episode. Whereas Jonathan was just like, I'm full speed ahead until he like, you know, got into that warehouse and. um you know, even he was not, you know, he, 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 it showed that he still has, even though he's in many ways got it ahead of Jordan was as far as where he is, it's the powers. It also still reinforces the fact that, hey, you, you know, you still, you still have a lot to learn uh, whenever he was uh, taken down by the, um, by that guy who was trying to uh, kill 
Sam's the ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Kidnapper. Yeah. Enemy. Yeah. All right. Well, that is it for Superman and Lois. And that brings us to the big topic, Dune Prophecy with episode one, The Hidden Hand. Okay. Now, okay. Disclaimer. Disclaimer alert. Because this is a science fiction show. Fantasy. There's going to be a lot of words and names that I'm going to mispronounce. We're just going to accept <laughs> and move on, okay? I can't retain all of the names and the <laughs> and the the planets and all of the stuff, okay? On Wallach 4. <laughs> <laughs> Wallach 9. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on a planet in a galaxy far, far away, young Valia <laughs> Harkonnen promises Mother Superior Raquel that she'll protect the sisterhood by putting one of their own on the imp- Imperial throne. 30 years later, later, Valia faces a threat to her long-awaited plan. I am so glad I did not read that before watching the episode because, honestly, that is a great distillment of basically what happens. Yeah. Um, even though, uh, like, that's that's honestly the overall blueprint of the episode. They have to set up the world, set up the history of the world, and drop a whole lot of exposition and and i i like this episode it's not my favorite pilot episode i've ever seen it i i i think it um honestly fell a little flat in terms of just it was very boring and safe how they did it because they used they used a lot of narration and you they but simultaneously, I understood a lot more about the world of Dune in this one episode than I have watching either of the movies. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will admit, I will admit, having watched both of the movies, I was surprised at how many names I did recognize mm-hmm. and how many things. Like, I know the Harkonnens are the bad guys in the new movies, okay? Like, so, so as soon as we, we established that Valia is our protagonist, quote unquote, I don't know if protagonist is a strong word these days, but I was like, Ooh, and she's, she's a Harkonnen. That's interesting. So we're, we're following this, this trend. Well, I don't know what it is about this year and the, and the, the antagonist, stories that we're getting yeah. the the uh the villain of it all um but i they had a they had a lot to do mm-hmm. i think they comp- it was a very efficient episode yeah. yeah um but what are what are some of your thoughts about it will yeah i agree i mean i think this so this show i'm intrigued and I was, I, I think I said that I, yep. whatever, I, you know, it was the word I used whenever Sunday night when I messaged you, I think we both watched, finished watching it at the same time. And, um, and, and you're right. I mean, it, the, they do establish the world very well as far as with the machine wars and stuff and, you know, how I can't remember the, the name of, you know, basically it was the, the thinking machines yeah. were, um, defeated you know to your point you know the one thing i did like they did frame it with uh, the, the harkovans and also the atreides and and, and basically like they, they painted the, the picture as such like even though you know the, the atreides basically um set up the the harkovans as as enemies and traitors but you know but you know, here's, you know, I'm the narrator here as far as Valia, you know, the adult Valia talking about her story and her family story. We're going to set, we're going to set this, the record straight here. And I can't remember the, I'm trying to remember how they, uh, the, the uh, quotes there at the very beginning of the, of the episode. Um, uh, but, um, but yeah, so they set that up, you know, I felt like it was a, a, a pilot of like two vibes because I, I honestly, with all you know all the exposition and stuff at the very beginning it it was very dense mm-hmm. and and i felt very whereas it was 
it, it really let lean into that. Uh, you know, some people say the Dune universe is the the think you know for the, the the thinking man's Star Wars universe, and it really leaned into that. Uh, it was a it, it did set things up, but I will say the second half of the episode when we you know we get thirty years you know we have the time jump Salu Seren or whatever the name of the planet is where the Mark Strong's character is the uh, um is the emperor for the imperium mm-hmm. um i felt that things really for me that was when i was like okay now i'm getting into it um and because i just felt it, the color i don't know if it was just the colors were more bright or compared to the starkness of the sisterhood um and, and all the exposition that was done at the beginning it just it, i mean it was i was i was i was like when are things going to happen because everybody was telling me what's going on, yeah. but I was like, when are we going to actually show me something or show what's going on? It was a lot of telling instead of showing. Right, right. I So for me, I, I completely agree with you. Like, And that's why I said it fell flat um, because – and they took a safe route of telling us what mm-hmm. has happened, what is happening, and to get it – and then while simultaneously – letting you in on like because i didn't really pick up on it until the end like how this this is the plan um Mm -hmm. with the princess but before we even get into all of that um for me i i was really i was with you and then and then the moment she used what i believe is called the voice yeah um which it seems like that was a new thing that had never been done in the sisterhood until Valia did it mm-hmm. in that moment. Yeah. And she had been practicing, which I was like, that that is intriguing that she was the one who cr- like created, because that's a big thing 10,000 yeah. years later. Yeah. So, and, and you can see it when they do the chime butt jump, but she not only uses it, but then she has... Dorita kill herself and and in that moment I was like yep this is this is uh yep I'm on board yep. <laughs> you, you're gonna kill Same. and then they 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 bookend that with the murders at the end of the episode and you're just like okay yeah House of Dragon it's it's on hold right now so we got Dune prophecy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like what's the old saying? You you have my attention, you have my curiosity. Now you know, you know. Now you have my attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I, I also just despite it, despite it all, I, I still am not entirely sure. I one hundred percent understand what true saying is, mm. but I don't think I need to know. Because the the at the end of the day, the way it's being used is is what's important to understand, and how whatever power or n- not power they possess, the um, the sisterhood has been able to maneuver themselves under Valia's command into this position where the rulers are relying on them because you see it the moment um emperor corino doesn't have kasha that's he becomes so much more vulnerable yeah for the rest of the episode and it and it's and it's very interesting to me how that like it's only been a few days and yet you can see like the way desmond sees it that oh He's alone, not mm-hmm. under the influence. Now is the time to plant other ideas inside this man's head. And and so that that the the idea that it's really these words, um, yeah. it's it's just that, that's very intriguing of how of how they did that. Um, a lot of great stuff from Desmond Desmond Hart. Yeah. But, yeah. Um. So. So so we get we get the time jump 30 years later. I like how then they make it a point 10,000 years before Paul's 
even born. Yep. <laughs> like, make no mistake. <laughs> make no mistake. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No For you doom casuals like us, you know, we, you know, we're not deep in the lore. So, uh, but yeah, but we, we're helping to frame it for, for, for the casuals. <laughs> Oh, it is it is a small little nod at um right when we're introduced to the older valia and yeah. the sisterhood because there's a mention of the harkonnens mm -hmm. wanting a true sayer for the fourth mm -hmm. time and her denying yep. them which so the harkonnens were were cast to the shadows but seem to have also been getting their way back but she's holding not allowing them completely in so we'll see yeah. where what that seed blooms into later on in the show yeah. um we get introduced to the princess and also her half brother constantine mm -hmm. constantine okay so listeners homework tell me where i've seen this man before <laughs> <laughs> I did I did the IMDB search about towards the end of the episode. I'm like, I've had it. I cannot place. I've seen this face. I've seen this face. So maybe it's not so much where I've seen him, but who is his doppelganger? Because there's someone, there's an actor. He yeah. looks so much alike, and I cannot put my name, I get finger on it. It it, it was driving me crazy anytime yeah. he was on the screen. Oh, uh, you know, that I, I had the same, I had the same reaction. Cause I was like, yeah. I know this kid from somewhere, but where? Yeah, I, I mean, I, maybe it's you know, I don't know. You know, I've seen some of the, the some of the pieces out there that says, you know, you got the older cast and you got the younger cast that could easily like, you know, be on a CW show. So maybe that's where I felt saw so, from somewhere. <laughs> maybe I don't I don't know yeah. I don't know there was and maybe it's true there's something about a swagger. He's really charming. Very intrigued what they're gonna do with him because it's. It's um, yeah. made very quickly clear he has no yeah. right to the throne. Clearly loves his sister, his half sister, mm -hmm. um, but is clearly a playboy who loves the spice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. Um, yes. But, yes. But Definitely loves the spice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they've, I feel like they're setting him up for something. So I'm I'm in, I'm intrigued with him. Um, it, and so, so what what are your thoughts on Yanez, the princess? Yeah, um, I like that. I like that character. I, I I really did. I mean, I think you know she. You know, when we were first introduced to her, uh, she's sparring. You know, we, well, we learn about from, from her brother to try to get her into the sisterhood uh, again, yeah. just to, and you know to to basically hatch the scheme of 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 uh Lalia eventually you know having someone in all the great houses um but, no i think oh. i don't think that's the scheme it's not about oh. have they have they already have yeah. someone in all oh. of the great it's more oh. about one of their own on the throne on the throne yeah yeah and that's what yeah thanks for correcting me there yeah that that's that's yeah and and, and of course you know maneuvering the wedding between the two houses to 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 strengthen their I guess their claim to the throne, um, well, as far as like well yeah. using using that because I mean I guess the emperors he's weakened because of the war I guess all the wars and stuff so he, he you know he needed that fleet from the Pruitt's family to to be able to strengthen his you know bas basically to to, to to strengthen his 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 hold on the Imperium so that you, you know and as can you know follow through with the plan like you just said to um have the sisterhood sitting you know sitting in, 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 on the throne right. yeah. yeah it's yeah. it's so it's all about the spice which yeah. is is only on a a, tr a trachis a tachis Arrakis. Ar Arrakis? Yeah. Arrakis. Okay. I was like, there sounds like as a T and R yeah. Arrakis. Yeah. On Ar Arrakis is a spice um, planet, very hard to control because of the worms. Mm -hmm. So, so you have and the Freeman who are also name dropped in the episode as well. Yep. Yep. Um, this is ten thousand years before Zendaya is born as well. <laughs> 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 so. yeah. And we had a name drop to the entreaties because yeah. Tyrion is the swordmaster that teaches and is as well. So, you know, so we have every, all the players are there. 
<laughs> yeah, for, which I thought was weird. I was like, why isn't Atreides the sword master? That what what happened? I thought they I thought they were the victors of the war against. But we'll, yeah. we'll find out about how the um, the current family um, got to power. I'm sure yeah. along the way, but but yeah. So it's to to show his military weakness. Mm-hmm. They're exploiting it by saying. So you need a fleet that can help you defend and protect the spice and the wealth of the Imperium. So, so the only match you can have is a nine-year-old boy for your daughter. Yep. So while, while he's coming of age, why don't you just send her away after they're married and then we can teach her all about this witchcraft. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which, and and what I I, I really enjoyed um, the 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 Empress, yeah. who clearly yeah. has not it's like it's like not been on board with this since day one, but yep. also acknowledges that this was part of the deal, mm-hmm. because there are some suggestions about deals for their own union and mm-hmm. her own power. And though I I didn't really make a note of this, but the one of the scenes that really sticks out to me and makes me wonder about what it means for the future episodes is when Yanez is talking to her mom and they and kind of says, You're not you're not the only one who negotiated this. I'm getting exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I, so I, as I would like to understand what was the negotiation and what did you give up? Because 20 minutes later, I see this horrific dream. Yeah. (laughs) Girl, I don't think you got what you wanted. (laughs) I don't think (laughs) it's going to go that way. (laughs) So I need to understand. Cause so it's just, I thought that was I there there's something about the way she says it and how her mom responds or doesn't really respond mm-hmm. but how they interacted in that moment that where I'm like ooh okay so th- there there's a lot of women who are really pulling a lot of strings throughout the entire episode yeah. and they're not all necessarily true stayers no no they're not they're not, but it's, yeah, but it's, it's a, it's a interestingly, like, I won't say, well, like with the sisterhood is, you know, it is, I guess it is a matriarchal, like, yeah, society as far as that. I mean, I know uh, 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 at least, at least in the Imperium right, <laughs> right now. Um, and even, I guess, even in the, down the line too, I mean, cause the, you know, whenever the uh, Bene Gesserit um, are, you know, it, it, but the sister is by, by, goes by that name ten thousand years later. I mean, they're you know they're clearly the the influence and and have big roles in 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 the Imperium, uh, which you know we, so we do know that Valga is 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 somewhat successful in her in her plan, and we're just sort of learning how how that all unfolds here. Um, but uh, yeah, that was one of the things I definitely was really struck by the by by the series, and and I'm glad you brought up the Empress and and, and also just you know how the relationship she has with the Emperor and and how like it, it, to that point too is like when Kesha was 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 went back to Wallach, um and, and how quickly he you know he was just, he was just like a floundering fish and, and and Desmond did come in there and take advantage of it because he is you know is 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 such a a weak weak leader um that he you know that, that he just can't function without having having that truesayer uh counselor and, and also even whenever Desmond was first introduced and Kesha was there you know to your point of, about the truesayers uh and their powers um you know it it, I, I like the way they, they described it. You know, she was like, "He is telling the truth, or what he perceives to be the truth." You mm-hmm. know, so so there's still some amb- so there's still not like there's still some ambiguity there as far as like what the actual truth is in the situation. Uh, and I think that goes back to sort of the 
you know, what I can't remember the exact quote, but like, you know, it's the history of prophecy um, as far as uh, things to come. Um, right. You know, it, 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 it's, it, it's a good little tie in back to that with this, with, um, with how true saying it, it is in, it, in this universe. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Like that, that in religion, like the mm -hmm. um, religion, religious allegory that even Desmond brings up in his conversation with Carino um, about how um, he believes in the gods. Mm -hmm. And and then Carino says, well, if you can get us out of this wedding, <laughs> then, <I'll laughs> make, then it'll make me a believer. And I didn't know it in that instant. It's like, oh, OK, yeah. um, because because I, I I guess I was like, OK, so that that'll be episode two. No, nope, mm -hmm. no. Nope. Nope, At nope. the very end of this episode, <laughs> and he does some kid killing. Um, but it, it's just such a good up, a good um, way to think about it because, to an extent, by having a true say, say um, uh, sayer, you are believing in something other than yourself. Mm -hmm. And and also, Desmond brings up how, like, we got rid of the thinking machines. And yet there are people still openly p pulling this, uh, the strings and yeah. and that hidden hand. And, and I thought I was like, that's just that's just brilliant. Like, yeah. you you may think like you've got freedom and everything, but you're still very much over under the rule and control of something else, someone else yep. um, and what they believe should happen. And. And to go to back to your point about the history versus the prophecy, I like I like that whole exchange between Valia and um, who's her number two? Her sister, uh, Tula. Tula, yeah. yeah. And and about like like we're supposed to guide them down the road no we're mm. supposed to make it for them yep. <laughs> it's just, like there's a difference it's a yeah. subtle difference but there is a very much like like you either guide them down the road but the moment you will start to make the ro road then you are playing god you mm -hmm. are playing something bigger than yourself Yep. Um, which, which honestly goes back to re Dorita and, and, uh, and how like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't, uh, breed the rulers and store like sperm and eggs, you know, to make sure like maybe <laughs> this is a good idea and just to devise this way of being matchmakers. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but, but okay. So, so so Lord Pruitt is goes out and um, has his little thinking machine still with him. Another one, I guess, mm -hmm. um, because the other one he had during the wedding gets destroyed. And that's when Desmond comes out and he, um, for all intents and purposes, burns the boy from the inside out. Yeah. Simultaneously, we go back to Wellick where we see um, Kasha experiencing the same horrific death mm -hmm. it, it's such a good ending because yeah it's horrifying but yeah. it's also just like well now i need to understand <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and the thing is like you know to the prophecy versus history and all that kind of stuff you know earlier you know we we saw the visions of i think with um the mother superior didn't she was it did, did she have a vision of the burning or was it somebody else that had the vision of the of the burn? Or was it Inez that had the vision? Um, um of, of, I think I think they both. Yeah. I think they both did. I, Inez didn't have a vision of burning. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe who, who was no, no. Oh no, it was Kesha who had the was it earlier vision? Is that why she went back? I'm trying to remember. Kasha, Kasha had a vision yeah. where Inez was in her wedding dress. Right, and that's it, that's and right. hanging upside down and was being pulled in by by what looked to like like a worm. That's right. That's um, right. And and she and Inez was yelling at her, "You did this. You mm -hmm. did this." Yeah. And and also the the pomegranate 
there were worms inside of it and there might have been some burning but i do think you're what you're referring to is more aligned with the the um the uh i don't know that the uh what whatever raquel sees and yeah and that's it yeah it is raquel yeah raquel sees that yeah because she saw yeah she and she talks about an acolyte Right. Someone that comes in to destroy the plan. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's that seems to be Desmond, but he's interesting because he's not a truth sayer, but he clearly has some sort of powers that might have been attributed to some spice. So Yeah. 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 So we don't we don't really know what his intent is um but and 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 then he, like yeah. and, and the other thing too with him too is like you know whenever um corio you know, corino watches that uh vis the, uh, the video yeah the video yeah and you know we see him we, we see him on arrakis and right before you know we see the sand the, the sandworms coming you know so uh -huh. all you know so how does that i mean i how does that video play into all, you know, into his powers, you know, yeah. and like you said, with the spice and everything else. So, I mean, you know, they, uh, that's what I was saying earlier, this episode, you know, it, it started out a lot of just ex exposition dump, but mm -hmm. whenever it did have the time jump and it and really did get into on the, on the planet, things really did, you know, especially when I think from really from when Carino and Desmond meet, things yeah. really just sort of take off from there. Yeah, 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 they, I, I mean, you said it in one word, intrigued. Yeah. I'm not blown away, but I'm definitely, I, I would like to, some explanation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I joked with you while, I was joking with you Sunday night, I was like, yeah, I had, I had to get the wiki open. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you have to, and yet I'm still mispronouncing things, oh well. <laughs> but, I, I am too. But yeah, that's why. I, yeah, we're we're, we're doing casuals, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But simultaneously, I felt I can't stress it enough how I felt like I actually understand exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, not exactly, but I understand what they wanted to explain to me in that episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the mythology was a lot clearer. Um. And, and simplified for me, even though it was a bit boring how they did that. It's still, they they had to do what they had to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and they I, jumped, yeah, and they jumped right into, like, they didn't tease things. They, like, they burned a kid at the end. <laughs> they, they, they had someone kill herself at the beginning, and then they, yeah. they bookend it with the killing of a kid and then someone else dying. And, and I can't stress that enough. Some of the most brutal ways <laughs> to where I'm just like, that, that's creative, like, yeah. inside out like that. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, for like, sure. Like Desmond, you you could yeah kill Kasha that way. Okay, she's an adult, but the kid, what why why you just yeah. poison poison slit of the throat. I don't know, but burning from the inside out that's a lot. Yeah, that was a lot. That that was a lot. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. They're like, all right, we we only have six episodes, and we're gonna like we're gonna. Yeah, I mean, that's how, yeah, I mean, other, yeah, I mean, really the only flaw I had, you know, well, there was some flaws, but the only the only thing towards the end there that was a sound of kind of like really was whenever Inez and, and the tradies like hooked up, I'm like, okay, oh. right, that was just like, okay, that, whenever people like made the Game of Thrones comparisons or like the gratuitous sex, I was like, okay, that's one. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. I was just like, um, and bathroom break, okay, because yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't need to, see, yeah. like, this is boring to me, I've seen yeah. this. In, yeah. in a d bunch of different ways like yeah, if you yeah, want to yeah. watch sex scenes go watch rivals which yeah. i did finish i did oh, finish yeah. rivals and i didn't tell you about it okay i okay i it got a little bit repetitive but by the end of it 
the there's something that happens in the very last episode where now I'm like, okay, I need season two. I, I need to understand one thing. I need to see where this goes because wow, I did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> did not see that coming. And, uh, and I know there's a book too, so <laughs> whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, um to go back to circle back to Doom Prophecy, we're on board. We got yeah. six episodes of this. Um, which when I heard that, I was like that's not it. I don't know how to feel about that, but yeah, but it feels like a it Marvel is season. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I, 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 I. Sometimes if it's six, I'm like, that's that's too short. How are you going to yeah, really yeah. tell a full story? But maybe it's just the appetizer, um, and yeah. they just want to see what the demand really is. Um, but. All right. On that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on social media at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. You can find me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you gear podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.